love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held by your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will Jesus. sing of the goodness. Jesus. I'm Kim, and I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. First, please remember to be in prayer for our mission team that will be in Stearns, Kentucky, this week serving with Grant Hasty. Pray that God will use them in incredible ways to glorify His name. Pray for safety as they travel there and as they return later this week. 
Mark your calendars for November 3rd. This Wednesday evening at 5.15, we are having a chili cook-off in the Fellowship Hall. Bring your favorite chili and see how it stacks up next to other recipes. We will name a winner that evening. Immediately following the cook-off, we will have our normally scheduled fall church conference. Make plans to be there and come hungry. This Friday, November 5th, is the first fifth quarter for our students in the Annex. Join us for fun from 10 p.m. until midnight for a time to hang out and enjoy each other's company. There'll be free food, games, and music. Students, invite your friends and we will see you there following the football game. Finally, don't forget that this Saturday night, November 6th, you need to set your clocks back one hour before you go to bed. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep and we'll see you Sunday morning for worship. If you have any questions, you can find all this information in the church app, on the website, or call the church office. We would love to see you be part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We are so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. I sing praises to the King. your power. God, I bow my head to you. You brought me peace in my worst hour. So I lift this up. I lift it up to you. Uh uh-huh. 
touching me Oh, he's touching me everyone, I'm Kim, and I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. First, please remember to be in prayer for our mission team that will be in Stearns, Kentucky, this week serving with Grant Hasty. Pray that God will use them in incredible ways to glorify His name. Pray for safety as they travel there and as they return later this week. Mark your calendars for November 3rd. This Wednesday evening at 5.15, we are having a chili cook-off in the Fellowship Hall. Bring your favorite chili and see how it stacks up next to other recipes. We will name a winner that evening. Immediately following the cook-off, we will have our normally scheduled fall church conference. Make plans to be there and come hungry. This Friday, November 5th, is the first fifth quarter for our students in the Annex. Join us for fun from 10 p.m. until midnight for a time to hang out and enjoy each other's company. There'll be free food, games, and music. Students, invite your friends, and we will see you there following the football game. Finally, don't forget that this Saturday night, November 6th, you need to set your clocks back one hour before you go to bed. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep, and we'll see you Sunday morning for worship. If you have any questions, you can find all this information in the church app, on the website, or call the church office. We would love to see you be part of all these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We are so glad that you're here today. Take a moment to pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. You can tell everybody stayed up and watched the Braves last night. It's real quiet in here. All right. <laughs> That's right. Let's go Braves. Well, let's not push it. 
I just caused a rift in the church because I'm a Georgia Tech fan. Sorry. Um, let's stand to our feet. We're so glad that you're here this morning. We are here to celebrate our Savior. He is good. Amen? Amen. Our God is good, and we worship Him today. Join in with us as we do that. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. We celebrate that today. The fact that there's power in the blood of Christ that cleanses us and makes us new. Amen? Amen. And we can look around us and I bet we could spend all morning celebrating the fact that God has been at work in our lives this week. That we see the evidence of that everywhere we look. That as you look at how uh, your life has gone, how your days have gone, how your week has been. God is at work. I think we all can agree with that. So let's celebrate the fact that God is at work all around us this morning. Let's sing this together. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. The fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness. All over my life, all over my life, I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. See the cross, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away 
celebrate that today, right? That God's at work all around us and within us. You guys can have a seat for a moment. If you turn the pack on. There we go. So we don't have to fear, amen? We have the evidence that the Lord is true working in our hearts and lives in, in so many ways. Well, uh, I've asked some folks to come with me, and we, um, if you're a guest of ours, we'd love to connect with you. If you could just fill out a card in the back, I'll be there. I'd love to connect to you there. We want to help you get connected into the life of the church. And you can also text guest to 423-455-9458, and we'd love to connect with you that way. Um, we have an amazing opportunity uh, to purchase land that is adjacent to our property just to the north. So right, it connects right to our parking lot. And so that's an exciting thing. And so our finance committee put together a top-notch team to develop a campaign. And we are calling that Gather and Grow. It's from Hebrews chapter 10, 24 through 25. And so uh, the team is here to share with you about that opportunity and how you can get involved. Joe? It's very exciting for our church to expand our campus. We're going north. There's three tracks of property we're going to buy in the next adjacent to the parking lot. The first one is the Mitchell property, which is the white service station building facing Main Street. Then on Margaret Street, there's a beauty shop that faces Margaret Street. And right behind the Mitchell property is a fenced-in lot called the Lumpkin property. And we got options on all three of these properties. We'll be buying these properties for $207,000, and we'll be doing that within just a few days. To fund this pro project, we're asking for a two-year commitment from, from our church, from each church family, and whatever you can give will go to purchase this. We want to pay off our indebtedness in two years, so you be in prayer this week, and then days to come, and let us know what your commitment is. Please take a commitment card and bring it back to us. We love you and thank you. Be with us on this project. Thank you. We are so excited about this project. Um, as Derek said, our theme scripture is Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 that says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Um, and we want you to consider how we may join together um, and accomplish this task. So we have a video that we want you to watch um, that will hopefully inspire you to, um, as you consider how you want to um, give.
Consider the possibilities. Consider the possibilities. Consider the possibilities. Consider what God can do. Consider what God can do. Consider what God can do. Consider the lives that will be changed. Consider the lives that will be changed. Consider the lives that will be changed. Consider how our church could grow. Think about how our church can grow. Consider how our church could grow. Consider how we can gather as God's people. Consider how we can gather as God's people. Consider how we can gather as God's people. Consider where we've come from. Consider where we have come from. Consider where we've come from. Consider the future of Lafayette First. Consider the future of Lafayette First Baptist. Do it for all the future generations. Consider the fun we'll have. Consider the fun we'll have. Consider the fun we'll have. Consider how we can gather as God's people. Consider how we can gather as God's people. Consider the impact to our community. Consider the impact this will have on our community. And consider the impact on our community. Consider how you can be part of this effort. Consider how you can be a part of this effort. Consider how you can be a part of this effort. Imagine what God could do with this property through our church here in the community. Consider how you might be a part of the Gather and Grow campaign today. If we all sacrifice together, God could work and do incredible things through us. So we're going to take a moment and uh, as we do each week, pray. And this one, this is going to be the... Uh, the prayer moment for us today, just to pray how we might be able to be involved on an individual basis, uh, but how we might gather together uh, as our church body, gather again, if you will, many of us, because this crazy pandemic has been crazy, and we're, we're able to do more now, thank goodness. But not just to gather, just to come and to sit and to be, you know, here at church, but to be that church family, to consider one another, to provoke one another to work, uh, to good works and to good deeds, as the scripture says, so that we can grow. We have an opportunity to do that. Would you take a moment with me and just pray to this end that God would help us to meet this goal uh, in two years. And as you leave today, if you'll grab one of these pledge cards, our team will be out there. Uh, and so uh, you can get one of those from them. Let's pray and ask God to bless us. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we are so thankful, Lord, for an opportunity. An opportunity that, Lord, we've prayed for for many years, Lord. And finally, it's available to us, God. And I pray that you'd help us as your people. As your body here in Lafayette, Georgia, God, as Lafayette First Baptist Church, Lord, that we would gather together, work together, link arms together, and serve you, Lord, so that we can see your kingdom grow. Bless this effort, Lord, and help us to honor you with our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give a round of applause as you stand to our team and thank them for all their work on this. Let's continue to celebrate through worship this morning. Jesus made a sacrifice for us that we could not make for ourselves at the cross. We celebrate this morning what Jesus did there for us. Let's sing together. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign cross at the cross where I 
I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. for crimes that I sing that out was it for crimes that I have done he groaned upon the tree amazing pity grace unknown and love beyond degree at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. to a time of the choir leading us. If you're able to keep standing, join us.
Would you thank our choir and worship team? Our God is good, and I love the reminder and love seeing their faces lead us because you can tell they believe it. And I love that line, when uh, suffering comes, that we will remember that he is good. What Calvary has taught us, that he is good. And so let's think about the goodness of the Lord today. And I pray that the goodness of the Lord would propel us into action. That we would remember Calvary. That we would remember Jesus' cross that we would recall what he did for you and me and that we would believe it at our very cores, that, that we would truly realize it in our own hearts and lives so that it would propel us to go where God has us to go to share the truth of that for the rest of the world. And our world needs Jesus today. Our world needs the church of Christ to rise up and to do what God has called us to do, to share with them, no matter the, the, the difficulty, no matter uh, the ridicule that may come, no matter even the persecution that may come. The Lord, the world needs the Lord's people to stand and to do what Christ has called us to do. We've been studying Titus, and we'll finish Titus today, but we won't finish our series. We're in a series of letters. Next week, Jason will lead uh, as we uh, learn about Philemon and that letter from Paul to Philemon. But in this series, we, we, we realize that Paul and, and Jude are, are ensuring that the faith that they hold is being passed on to the next generation, passed on down the line, that, that this thing will continue on after they're gone. And, and, and that's what uh, I hope that we will take away from, from these letters in our own hearts and lives, that the thing we'll walk away with is realizing that I have a faith that was passed down to me, that someone left to, to me to, to not only to have and to enjoy, but to nurture and care for, to cultivate and to take it with me. You see, uh, Christianity is not meant to be something that we only intellectualize or, or, or even uh, get uh, and, and grasp for ourselves to be consumed. It's not that. It's not only meant for us to receive it and consume it for ourselves and, 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 and gobble it all up and never pass it on. No, it's a baton. It's a baton. It's it's one generation passing on to the next, a faith, a Christianity, and we are the recipients of that faith. That's why I love a multi-generational church atmosphere, because it is it's how God meant it to be from the very beginning. That one generation would pass on to the next the faith that they held, and we are the recipients of Thousands of years of Christians devoting their lives to Jesus, their Lord, their Savior, and passing it on to their loved ones and their family members and, and to the people that they've encountered in their lives. And the church has grown, sometimes in spite of us. And it has been passed on much sometimes in our own uh, because sometimes we get in the way, but it still has passed on again and again. And what we've saw, seen in this series so far is that it takes intentionality. You and I are meant to be intentional about passing this on. Just as you and I would if we were running a relay race and holding a baton, we would have to be intentional about timing it perfectly to pass that baton on to the next so that the, our team can win the race. As much as we would have intentionality about that and practicing that handoff again and again and again, you and I need to have intentionality in passing on our faith 
to those who will come after us and go far beyond our lifespan. And Paul, in chapter 3, concerns himself with the last, the lost, and the least. I've stolen that from Kathy, I believe. I think that's your phrase, but I love it, and so, but I will attribute it to you. But that's what Paul is, is concerning Titus with. He wants him to see the importance of not just living this out among uh, the, those that he had, had chosen to be elders and, uh, and uh, young, men, uh, young women, older men, older women that we mentioned in chapter 2, but also to the entire world, to whomever they came in contact with, to the people that they would, uh, would walk around and, and, and be in, in the city with and, and shop with and uh, rub shoulders with and go to school with and these people too that they would that they would go to them and they would go and share and be a light shining among the whole world and uh, you'll notice today uh, at the end of the service we will be uh, commission you'll be you will be commissioning seven of us that will be going to Stearns, Kentucky today to shine the light. And I love what Debbie has done here as a representation. These seven lights are you going out into the world through us. And that's what Paul wanted Timothy to realize is that the light of the gospel would shine through those that God had called. The light of the the, the gospel would shine among the world. We cannot merely pass on our faith to those we encounter in this body. Yes, that's important. Passing it on to our own children is important. And that takes great intentionality in and of itself. But that is not merely what we are to do. That's not the only thing we are to do. We are to take the gospel... To the world, you and I have been entrusted with the message of the cross of Jesus Christ, not to keep it for ourselves, but to shine that light for all to see. And that's what Paul wants this church, through Titus's leadership, to understand and to realize. We need to find new people to spread our faith to. So how we live with intentionality among our neighbors matters. We're meant to share Jesus with all we encounter. And it's not just meant to be, uh, you know, we just live our lives and hopefully they see our lives and, wow, they're a great person and we should emulate them. That's awesome, we should do that, but that's not how this works. You and I have to proclaim it. Romans says, how will they hear if no one preaches to them? Yes, we need to live a life that's above reproach so that when people see our lives, they have nothing bad to say against us. That's what, P, uh, Titus, that's what Paul told Titus in chapter 2. But Paul also tells Titus that this is something that's meant to be spoken, proclaimed, and lived out. You see, we, we often make false dichotomies uh, in, in our lives. And one of those has been, well, you know, if we'll just live our lives how we live them and then maybe somebody will ask us about it. That's not, it. yes, do that. But don't only do that. Don't only do that. We are to speak the gospel. We are to proclaim it for people to hear. So what are we to proclaim? We see three things in this passage and we're in Titus Chapter 3, we see three things. And look here with me in chapter 3. And if, if you are able to do this, would you stand as we honor the reading of God's Word? Let's, we're going to go, this might not be on the screen, but we're going to go to 2.15 first. Because it, 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 it's, it's part of this. Proclaim these things. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. Chapter 3, verse 1. Remind them to submit to rulers and authorities, to obey, 
to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting, and to be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. For we too were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved by various passions and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, detesting one another. But when the kindness of God our Savior and His love for mankind appeared, He saved us, not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His great mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He poured out His Spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So that having been justified by His grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed God might be careful to devote themselves to good work. Careful to devote themselves to good works. Intentionality. These are good and profitable for everyone. But avoid foolish debates, genealogies, quarrels, and disputes about the law because they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a divisive person after a first and second warning, for you know that such a person has gone astray and is sinning. He is self-condemned. When I send Artemis or Tychicus to you, say that one five times fast, make every effort to come to me in Nicopolis, because I've decided to spend the winter there. Diligently help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey so that they will lack nothing. Let our people learn to devote themselves to good works for pressing needs so that they will not be unfruitful. All those who are with me send you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with all of you. You may be seated. So in this passage, we see three things that we are to proclaim. And the first is that we are to proclaim Jesus' kind gentleness. Verses 1 through 4 show us this. Paul tells us how to proclaim, and he shows us why to proclaim. So he's telling us to proclaim Jesus. And in just a few verses, he tells us, he reminds us of what we are to proclaim because he reminds us what we have inherited through Jesus Christ, the Spirit being poured out on us, the salvation that is available to us through Jesus. But before he gets there, he helps us to see that we have a how to do this, a, a right way to do this. And the church needs to hear this today because unfortunately, the church has become this place or is constantly battling legalism and this idea that we're somehow better than the rest of the world or better than each other or uh, we have this, uh, uh, we struggle with this and, I, and I'm thinking not here but just in general the church struggles with this air of, of, of pompous uh, pride that keeps us from doing what the Bible actually tells us to do and how we not only love one another but how we love people on the outside. So he tells us how, and the how is because, or is by kindness and gentleness. Remind them to submit to the rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to slander no one, to avoid fighting, and to be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. He tells us the how. Be kind. Be gentle. Have you, have you ever, uh, real, like, have you ever been in a situation where uh, relationship is, is torn and, and, and uh, you, you know, you, you've been harsh or you've, uh, you've been um, uh, struggling with how to get uh, that relationship reconciled? This happens every day in my house, and it's called parenting. Every day, you've been harsh, and guess what? Harshness, though it oftentimes comes without warning because you're irritated, and these children that should obey what you have to say don't always do that. 
But what I found is that harshness rarely works. But kindness and gentleness all the time works all the time. And it doesn't mean that I'm not a disciplinary figure. It doesn't mean that my children don't have consequences for the things they do. They should, and they and they do. But how are they where how are they going to receive it is the question you have to ask. And that's the same thing with any of our relationships. Gentleness turns away wrath. Kindness. In fact, the scripture tells us it's the kindness of our Savior that leads us to repentance. Harshness and non-gentleness may lead to a momentary correction of behavior, but it doesn't lead to a heart change. So you and I need to be kind and gentle as we share the gospel and boldness. Remember I mentioned false dichotomies. I think our culture and, and oftentimes even Christianity has painted this thing that you, you must be a contrarian to the rest of this, the world so that they'll believe. And so you can't be bold if you're not a contrarian. And we've equated boldness with being contrary. And that's not the, the case. In fact, Jesus, if you look at him, uh, as he was led to, to the cross, he went as a silent lamb to the slaughter. Yet he was bolder than you and I could ever hope to be. So we need, Paul tells us, we need kindness and gentleness. And then he tells us the why. Why do we need it? And it's because kindness and gentleness was shown to us. What does he say? He says, listen, show gentleness to all people. Be kind, always showing gentleness to all people. Verse 3, for we too were once foolish. We too were once disobedient, deceived, enslaved. And so what we must recall and remember, yeah, the world's in a crazy situation. There's, there's a lot of uh, difficulty going on. There's a lot of evil going on. But what we must remember is that left to our own devices, we'd be in the same spot that they would be in. And oftentimes Christians act no different than the rest of the world, oftentimes. But what Paul's reminding them is that, listen, hey, you were deceived once. You were living according to your own lust once. You were living your life however you wanted to once. And kindness and gentleness from our Savior was delivered to you. And so let, let your kindness and gentleness prevail as you proclaim. So it doesn't mean that we don't proclaim to be kind and gentle. That's a false dichotomy on the other side. And we believe, well, I just wouldn't want anybody to be upset with me. And I just, I don't want to confront anyone. I just, you know, I, I'm just, they can live their life and I'll live my life. And that is not proclaiming it all. That is not uh, kindness and gentleness because in, in trying to be uh, non-contrarian, contrarian, thank you, non-contrarian, we are not being kind to them because we're allowing them to slip on into judgment. So it's ultimately kind to tell someone that you love them and that Jesus loves them, that Jesus died for them and Jesus wants them to live a new life in him, that's ultimately kind. But how you do it matters. And Paul tells us we ought to be gentle. The thing is, is that we were once like them and oftentimes we forget our own estate before we trusted Christ. And I realize you know, you may be like me and, and uh, similar to me in a way. I, I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior at six. You know, I mean, how bad could I be? But the Lord has allowed me to see throughout my life how my heart longs, my flesh longs for the way I once was far too much. And if we are honest with ourselves, we'll realize and understand this was us too. And we need Jesus. 
The second thing that we see here is that we proclaim Jesus, Jesus' merciful regeneration. This is what I was talking, talking about. See, Paul expounds on, on not just on the kindness shown to us, but he goes into it. He reminds them, he's like, listen, we need to be kind and gentle because God was kind and gentle to us in our sin. And then he reminds us of how Jesus was kind and gentle to us. And he tells us and reminds, us, uh, reminds Titus and reminds uh, those believers reading this letter to them that, that Jesus sacrificed it all for you and for me. That he died on the cross. That he who knew no sin became sin for you and for me. And, and he died to that sin. He laid himself down. He humbled himself fully for you, for me, so that he could give us redemption, so that he could give us his mercy, so that he could give us his salvation, so that he could give us his grace. And that in his mercy, he, he held back what we actually deserved while extending to us the love and mercy and grace that can only come through his sacrifice. We should, this, should, this should be something we never get over. This should never become commonplace to you and I, that, that Jesus loved you and me while we were still sinners, Romans 5, 8 says. Christ died for you and me. He loved us and gave himself up. He took on my sin and exchanged it for his righteousness. And we talked about that early in the series as well. And I've heard it said that, well, I just want to get to something deeper. We always talk about the gospel. We always talk about Jesus. And we always talk about his cross. I want to get to something deeper. I want to learn more. There is nothing deeper than Jesus Christ dying for you and me. That's where everything else stems from. We should never get over it. We can never get beyond it. There is nothing more important to it. I've heard people say, well, we always sing songs that are bloody songs about the cross and Jesus' sacrifice. Yeah, because we shouldn't get over it. Jesus died for you and me. His blood was spilled so that we didn't have to. And this regeneration that Jesus brings through his blood, through his cross, regenerates us, gives us life, gives us freedom, gives us a new life to walk and live in, a righteousness that spills into us and ought to spill out of us. And what Paul says in verse 8 is that it ought to lead to our good works. This saying is trustworthy. I want to insist on these things so that those who have believed God might be careful, intentional, to devote themselves to good works. And that's our third thing, that we proclaim Jesus as the source of our good works. You want to know how people will know you love Jesus? How you regard them, how you act around them, and what you tell them about the greatest news ever. You want to know how people are saved today in our communities, in our neighborhoods, at our places of work, in the grocery store? You know how those people will be saved? If you and I will go to them, regard them as worthy of receiving good news, do it with kindness and gentleness, how we act around them will help, but what we tell them will lead them to salvation. And that's not my job. It is my job on my, for who I encounter. But see, what we've, what we've done is, in the Christian church, the history is we said, well, that's, that's the preacher's job. That's the pastor's job. He's, he, that's the evangelist's job. That's, that's the revival's job. That's this meeting's job. We're supposed to, you know, well, let's do that. No, 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 no. 
as you and I are part of the body of Christ, it is all of our jobs to shine the light of the gospel wherever we go. Think about it. Think about it. If it was just my job, there's only so many people that I can reach in this community. There's over 7,000 people that live in the city alone. 15,000 people if you go 10 miles out. I can't reach 15,000 people on my own. But if all the lights go into all the areas of our community to shine the light of the gospel, it's far better and far easier for all of us collectively to shine the light of Jesus wherever we go to bring about change, to bring people to salvation. Now, we have a real opportunity to proclaim Jesus to Lafayette. Yeah, we, we've got a campaign. Yeah, we've got to raise $207,000. Yeah, it's going to be cool. But think about it this way. There's an opportunity to say God is on the move here. There's an opportunity for youth in our community to have a place to come to where uh, their lives is chaotic in every other area, but they can come here and find love and peace and joy in the message of Jesus. There's an opportunity for children to come and to find the message of Christ because the Lord is working in us and through us. That's, what this, that's why we called it gather and grow the, because the passage of Scripture says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We don't, if, if the pandemic has taught us anything, we don't come to church just to come to church. The church is not a place. I, I understand we all call the building the church. I understand that. And I, all under, I understand we all know that the people are the church. But we got to be intentional about living that out. The, we come to the church because we are the church. You're the members of the body of Christ. And I don't mean the country club members. Like, I don't, it's not the same. Or the members of the gym or the members of whatever. It's, you are an appendage. You, are, you have a, a job. I have a job to, to share the gospel. We're the hands and feet of Jesus, literally, into this, wor into this world, into this community. And we have an opportunity to gather, not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but we also have the opportunity to go into the world and help the, help the community to grow in the, and help the kingdom of God to grow because of our influence. So that's what this campaign is about, and that's what all of this is about. That's what this life is about for you and I to truly grasp and understand and, and be enamored by the fact that Jesus died, humbled himself for you and me, so that it will be fully realized and internalized and that it will pour out for the whole world to see. So that's the call today that Jesus would help us to grasp this, to understand this, and not just know more but that it would affect our behavior and that, as Paul said, we'd be able to devote ourselves to good works. Would you pray with me? And I pray that God will work in our hearts and lives. Jesus, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you that it still speaks to our hearts today. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us. First to salvation, Lord, you, you've given us freedom in you, freedom in Christ, forgiveness of our sins, Lord. You, we were once like them, but we're not any longer. Thank you. So now, Lord, help us to take that message to others. To be a light 
in our world for you. Lord, I pray if someone's here today and they don't know you as Savior, Lord, convict them of their sin. Help them to realize that you can forgive them. No one's too far from the the hand of salvation, Lord. And so, God, would you help them to see their need for you today and respond today in faith to trust you and ask you, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and live through me. Would you help them to pray that prayer today, God, to trust you, Lord? If maybe someone's here today, and I pray, I pray that you would do this for all of us, God, that you would help us to realize we need to... To, to be intentional about living our lives so that the world can see that Jesus is real and he's here to forgive them. Lord, would you convince us of that and convict us of that even today, Lord? And I pray if maybe someone's here, Lord, that wants to, to begin the process, to join here, to be a part of this body, Lord, to be literally the hands and feet, the members, to do the work, to serve according to their gifts so that we can see your kingdom grow in this town and in the world through Lafayette First Baptist. Lord, would you move today because that's what it's going to take. Would you move in our hearts? Would you move in our lives, God? Would you help us to follow you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? And as you stand, we're going to sing. If God is moving in your heart and life, you come. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee.
how God receives us, and that's how we are seen before Him. Amen? You guys be seated for just a moment. Um, as Derek mentioned earlier during his sermon, we do have a team that's going to be leaving this afternoon uh, to go to Stearns, Kentucky. And if you listen to the podcast at all this month, the man that we interviewed uh, at, the, at the beginning of our missions month on the podcast, Grant Hasty, is going to be leading them this week. And so if you're going on that, if you're part of the team, if you'll come down front here, we would like to pray for you. Um, so if you're, if you're going with that team, come on down. These men and women have given up uh, this coming week to serve the Lord in missions. Um, they're going to be doing lots of various things. Um, but there's two things that we'd like to do to send them off with. Uh, number one, uh, we want to pray for them. We want to pray that God uses them in an incredible way. We want to pray that God gives them safety as they travel and as they work. Um, but then also, we want to pray for them through this week. And so, as many of you that are able, uh, if you would, come down. We're going to lay hands on them and pray for them down here in just a moment. But also, we have in this bowl here, um, there are cards with each of their names on it. And we would encourage you, uh, if you'd like to commit to pray for them, you can come up here and uh, pull one of those name cards off. If you want to pray for all of them, take one for each of them. If there's one in particular that you like better than the others, you can pray for them more this month, this week as well, okay? That's a joke. Um, but pray, pray for them this week. And um, so if you would now, let's move. If we could get some people to come and lay hands on these. We want to pray for them here in just a moment. Let's pray together. God, you are good. We've celebrated it all morning. And Father, I pray now um, for these that are going to travel this week, um, Lord, that they would take your goodness with them, that they would share it with those that they come into contact this week. Yes, in their actions, as they serve with a smiling face and a glad heart. But God, also, give them opportunity to share the gospel with words so that people have an opportunity to hear the goodness of our God, of what they've been saved from, and who they've been saved to. And God, that lives would be changed, that legacies would be created to be left behind for, your faith, or for our faith in you. And God, that you would use these as an extension of our body here in Lafayette to Stearns, Kentucky. God, we do pray for good weather for them as they work. We pray for safety as they travel. We pray for health. And God, we trust that you will provide in all these ways. Thank you for their willingness to go. May it be an example to all of us that this week, we will have opportunities to share our faith with people here right in our own town, in our own workplace, in our own homes, in our neighborhoods. God, I pray that you would help us to be the lights that Derek mentioned earlier. That we would go out and contact and influence our entire community for the gospel. God, thank you for this time. Go with these as they travel this afternoon. Help us to support them in prayer this week here back at home. God, we love you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Well, for those of you who did not come forward, that's okay. Um, but you can come and grab one of these cards on your way out. Um, but I would encourage you on your way out to continue to worship through giving. Uh, so there's a place to do that here in the room, in the boxes in the back. Or you can text Lafayette first to 73256. Listen, whenever you guys get finished, I was just going to tell a couple things to the people. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but we'd encourage you to, to worship through giving in those ways. And um, if you're with us online, you can go to our website, lafayettefirst.life slash give and give that way. Go, you are sent out into the mission field. Have a great week.